So one of my regular watchers, Jack Bolton Wanderers FC, commented suggesting I should do the top five managers this season. But instead, I have adapted that concept to rank every manager from best to worst. There is a link to his channel in my description, so feel free to check him out. Due to Darren Moore being virtually relegated when he came in, West Brom will be represented by Alan Pardew. Let's get into the video ranking every Premier League manager this season. Number 20, Alan Pardew. If there was one word to sum up this man's reign at the Hawthorns, it would be dreadful. West Brom under Pardew looked clueless, winning just one game in his time, losing eight in a row before he lost his, con lost his job in the black country. Number 19, Paul Lambert. Similarly to Alan Pardew, Paul Lambert has won just two one game since coming in for Mark Hughes in January. Stoke went 13 games without winning after his first win, but Paul Lambert won his final game as manager of Stoke in the Premier League, uh, which prevailed them from not finishing bottom, but they still got relegated. So that was two wins in 14 games for Lambert. Number 18, Carlos Calvial. To Carvial's credit, he made a huge difference when he came in, taking a Swansea City side to look dead and buried to comfortably outside the relegation zone. However, when it came to the crucial time of the season, Carvial failed to pick up points that meant Swansea could retain their status in the Premier League. Number 17, Javi Gracia. Javi Gracia is one of the most met appointments for a while. The Hornets have won just four games since he came in and he has never pulled up any trees wherever he has been. I would be surprised if Gracia is at Vicarage Road next season, with Watford's board being so trigger happy. If they didn't accumulate so many points at the beginning of the season under Marcus Silva, this man could have well taken them down. Number 16, Mark Hughes. This is based on his time both at Southampton and Stoke. Mark Hughes lost his job in January at Stoke after losing to League 2 side Coventry in the FA Cup and left them just outside the relegation zone and shipping goals left, right and centre. It looked like the, he had lost the fans, the players and finally the board. But to his credit, he has taken Southampton from almost certain relegation to safety, which is exactly what he was brought in to do. I am sure that Mark Hughes will improve Southampton next season. Number 15. David Moyes. To the surprise of everyone in November after sacking Slavin Bilic, the West Ham board appointed David Moyes, who had been relegated just last season with Sunderland. Moyes has done reasonably well at the London Stadium despite not having any backing from the board, as well as a huge divide between the West Ham board and the fans. Number 14, Claude Puel. Claude Puel was sacked unfairly according to Sam by Southampton at the end of last season. Puel was appointed manager during the season after Craig Shakespeare was sacked by Leicester City. During his time in charge at the King Power Stadium, Puel has taken the Foxes from the relegation battle to a top table finish for the second season running after finishing 8th with Southampton. But once again the fans are unhappy with Puel, with his style of play and his job could be under threat yet again. Number 13, Arsene Wenger. For some supporters of Arsenal, the end of the 22-year reign of Arsene Wenger can't come soon enough, while others will be sad to see him go, but there is no doubt from both that this season Arsenal have really underachieved. Wenger will leave his final season without a trophy, leaving the club in 6th place, the worst finish he has had as a Premier League manager. Who will replace Wenger at the helm at Arsenal is yet to be seen, but I don't think it could get any worse. Number 12. Big Sam Allardyce. The story of Sam Allardyce is very similar to that of Claude Puel, but a little worse. Everton were in an awful position when Allardyce took over from Ronald Koeman, but as he always does, he guided Everton to safety pretty quickly, but after safety, Everton fans became unhappy with the style of play at Goodison Park. Number 11, Antonio Conte. Last season, Antonio Conte would have been the clear winner of this after he guided Chelsea to the Premier League title. Conte was doing okay this season, but things fell apart. Conte was doing okay this season, being a part of the chasing pack along with Manchester United, behind runaway leaders Man City, but things fell apart for the Blues at the start of the year. Conte, Conte's Chelsea lost five games in seven 
and were started to be adrift from the Champions League places. There is continued talk of Conte leaving Chelsea, uh, with the Italian being unhappy with both transfers and the budget as a manager. Number 10, Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe has made dreams come true at Bournemouth in recent seasons, and the Cherries have once again had a good season. It looked like they were going to struggle at the start of the season, but in January, wins against Everton, Arsenal and away at Chelsea as seen the Cherries rise to a comfortable part of the mid-table. Number 9, Roy Hodgson. When Roy Hodgson was appointed at Palace, the club had not won or scored in their opening four games. That continued for the next three. However, since then, Hodgson has taken the club from what was form-wise or was on its knees to an to safety. An amazing achievement and he has got his reputation back after losing to Iceland in the Euros with England. Number 8, Maurizio Pochettino. Maurizio Pochettino started the season with several pundits tipping him to struggle with the whole Wembley Stadium hoodoo. Pochettino, after a struggle at the start, has turned things round with Tottenham finishing third, meaning there will be Champions League football at the new White Hart Lane. 7. Jose Mourinho Mourinho, for me, has once again improved Manchester United. Mourinho has finished second place with enough points to win the title nine of the seasons since the Premier League began, as well as add potentially adding another trophy into the cabinet with the FA Cup. 90 points finish is not too bad at all and is a huge improvement from last season. Number 6, Chris Hewton. Chris Hewton's Brighton and Hove Albion have had a very good season in the Premier League. Hewton has guided the Seagulls to Premier League safety, which is the aim at the start of the season. Hewton has got the best out of some average players such as Lewis Dunk, Shane Duffy and Glenn Murray. And I am sure every Brighton fan is absolutely thrilled with beating the likes of Arsenal and Manchester United in their first season. Number 5. David Wagner David Wagner has done an incredible job at Huddersfield Town. Taking the club from the relegation battle of the Championship to the Premier League has done the impossible task of keeping Huddersfield Town a Premier League club. Wagner's side just a few weeks ago looked like they would be relegated with their horrendous final run but it inspired Wagner and his side to two draws at former champions Chelsea and current champions Manchester City. Number 4 Jurgen Klopp Jurgen Klopp plays one of the best style of football you will see anywhere on the planet. His stunning trio of Salah, Mane and Firmino have been incredible, helping Liverpool to another top four finish, as well as getting into the Champions League final for the first time an English club has since 2012. Number three, Rafa Benitez. Rafa Benitez has done a great job at Newcastle United. Like Eddie Howe's Bournemouth, Newcastle struggled in the opening few months of the season, but since January have been incredible, getting safe in the relegation zone with basically a championship squad and an owner who isn't willing to put any money into the club and is desperate to sell. Under the right ownership, who knows where Rafa could take the tune. Number 2. Sean Dyche No one saw Sean Dyche on his Burnley side doing this at the start of the season. Dyche had guided his Burnley side to just one win all season away from home, to a European spot. Incredible by Dyche, who probably any other season would have won the Manager of the Year for sure. He deserves a chance at a bigger club, but I am sure he will want to test himself in Europe with Burnley before he leaves turf more. Number 1. Pep Guardiola In one of the most dominant, successful Premier League seasons of all time, how can Pep Guardiola not be number 1? Guardiola has gained the most points, the biggest winning margin, the biggest goal difference, the most Premier League wins, the most away wins, the longest winning run. Guardiola and his side have been on another planet this season and no one can live with them. 100 points in the Premier League puts the every Premier League winner far behind them. This team is by far and away probably the best club ever in, in a course of a season. With the right recruitment this summer, Guardiola could be the first Premier League manager to retain the title this decade. 
Thank you so much for watching the video. Do you agree with me? Let me know down below and your reasons for your choices. I am Mike and I will see you soon.